Earlier this year, the remains of a V-2 rocket were unearthed on Canvey Island. Luckily, it missed the town. It was destined for Target 42, which was London. Somewhere along the line, either the rocket malfunctioned or something drastically went wrong. Now, unfortunately enough, it crashed in the field. And I think the Canvey people should feel very lucky that this thing didn't come down in the built-up area, because there would be generations that wouldn't be here now. And thanks to the war writings of H.E. Bates, those generations won't forget the carnage inflicted by Hitler's terrifying flying bombs. Recently, Joe and I documented the remains of Canvey's World War II V-2 rocket crater via drone. This is where the bomb's explosive warhead struck, sending Earth higher into the air, leaving a dimple of soil in the centre. The warhead had become detached from the bomb's main body, which crashed to the ground in the fields inland. The scraps of its engine, turbo pump and more remain on display at the Dutch Cottage Museum to this day. Here is the original footage recorded by Gary Fowler of the wreckage's excavation in 1993, recut online for the first time. On the 31st of December 1944, at 7.21, a V2 rocket like this was fired. It fell short of London and crashed at Canvey Island. The numbers of V2s that were reported was 1,115. The numbers that reached London, or Target 42, was 517. The number in other areas was 598. The V2 rocket was 46 foot long, had a maximum speed of 3,500 miles an hour, had a warhead of nearly a tonne which was 60% amatol and 40% metal. The height varied from up to 60 miles. The flight time was roughly 3 minutes to 40 seconds. These are the remains of what they called the South End rocket. It crashed on October 11th, 1944, next to South End Pier. The recovery team at the time recovered this Venturi, which is the part at the bottom end of the rocket, which the fire and the mixtures would be squirted in. The parts you see on this video begin with the Venturi, which is the first part of the wreckage that we found when we went over to the fields. All that was on show was a top part, roughly six to a foot of inch showing. Also, later on in the video, near the end, we came across the turbine and the pump assembly, which is this blue hair area here. Also in the area must be the liquid oxygen tank and the alcohol tank. The Canvey V2, which crashed off a Canvey Way, was fired from Holland, near the Haag or the Hague. It left on the 31st of December 1944 travelling across the North Sea on its way to London, but it crashed on Canvey Island. The flight time was 3 minutes 40 seconds at 7.21 on that 31st. What a Christmas present. This is what it looked like when we went over there with George Frost the farmer who had hit it with a grass cutter while turning it behind a tractor. He wasn't sure what it was, he had called the police and the bomb crew out they told him it was an old boiler, so we decided on that Sunday to go and investigate. When we walked up to it, we realised straight away what it was, as we could see the mixture taps on the bottom of the V2 Venturi, which are here. This part of V2 rocket had lain undisturbed for nearly 50 years from the impact date. Here I am just having a picture done for the scale. As you can see, it's only a very small proportion of this V2 Venturi. The rest is obviously underground and buried. The V2 bomb, which crashed in the fields south of Canvey Way, scattered fragments far and wide when the warhead exploded. Gary recalls finding the earthen sea wall shot through with tiny scraps of metal the size of ten pence pieces. It 
was reported that barn doors at the nearby Pantile farm were blown off by the shockwave. Throughout the closing year of the Second World War, around eight V-2 rocket bombs exploded on and around Canvey Island, many landing on the marshes and in the River Thames. Fortunately, there were no human casualties. However, a V-1 flying doodlebug bomb did strike the island at Deepwater Road, resulting in five lives lost and nearly 30 injured. The American B-17 bomber which crashed at Canvey Point in 1944 was in fact returning for a mission to a suspected V-1 launch site in Zudowsk, France. Whilst Hitler was fighting a losing battle after the D-Day invasions, it didn't stop him from trying to inflict terror upon England's population. Yeah, it's fresh in the cold. Yeah. Right, leave it a couple of seconds, push a button. Out. You can move that round but with the handle.
Earlier in the war during the Blitz, towns in the Thames estuary were ravaged by high explosive and incendiary bombs dumped by planes returning from air raids to London. With the oil refineries at Shell Haven and Corriton to the west being targeted, Canvian fobbing marshes became littered with both enemy and allied munitions during the Blitz. Fields of Canvey had to be scoured only recently for the development of the RSPB West Canvey Marsh project in case of any unexploded munitions. 